World-renowned researcher Dr. Brad Schoenfeld just pointed to a study for what he calls the closest thing we have to the fountain of youth, and I wanted to highlight the study as well as Dr. Schoenfeld's commentary because some people radically underestimate just how significant a difference exercise makes. And the numbers that we've got in this new study that we'll look at in the moment even surprised me, so they relate to how adults in their late 60s who exercised compared to those in their 20s who don't. So we already know that exercise can lower the risk of premature death by 19-25%, to but what does the impact on exercise have on aging, and what does it look like in the real world? So one of the most valuable things in terms of quality of life as we get older is the ability to maintain and engage in physical activity. So we can see that physical function tends to decline with age, and a previous interesting study compared older master athletes to different groups, including moderately active young people. So these were individuals who engaged in significant strength training for years, and the average age was about 70. And they performed even better than the young in several areas. So in the leg press, for instance, they had a 26% higher maximal strength. So on one hand, these data are amazing. They reveal a 70-year-old can beat moderately active young people in their 20s in certain measures of physical fitness. But on the other hand, these results looked specifically at master athletes. So these are a fairly elite group of individuals who train intensively and engage in competitive athletic events. So the fact that they can perform just like they are in their 20s is interesting, but it might not be that relevant for the rest of us. So rather, the question is this, what are the impacts on physical mobility for the average person who exercises regularly but isn't winning marathons in their retirement? Well, that's exactly what this new study that I mentioned at the start of the video is all about. So the study looks specifically at resistance training. So researchers identified four groups of healthy individuals. Two of the groups were younger. So one of the groups who were younger didn't exercise regularly and the other one did exercise regularly. Then they had two older groups divided into the same categories. They wanted to see how different groups performed on a set of tests of physical abilities. So the researchers picked tests that reveal typical declines that come with getting older. So what were the findings? Well, we can group these tests into three areas physical function, muscle strength, and then muscle mass. So we'll consider the first. Here the results reveal that exercise is more significant than most of us would imagine. So we can see the impact quite clearly in the 30 second chair stand test. So that was the test that I used for my rapamycin and exercise clinical trial and I'm hoping that the results will be available soon. But for this test, the participants were told to stand up and then sit back down on a chair as many times as possible in 30 seconds. So the older resistance trained group performed just as well as the young resistance trained group and their performance beat out the young non-resistance trained group which is significant. And the results were similar for many of the other physical ability tests, with the older group maintaining physical function at least at the level of the young, non-resistance trained participants. So you might be wondering what exactly are the ages here? Well the young in the study, they were in their mid-twenties, and the old, they were nearly 70 on average. So just let that sink in for a moment. With regular resistance training, a 70 year old can maintain the ability to do things like climb stairs and rise from a chair at a similar level to those in their 20s. And on some measures, the older adults who resistance trained, they performed similarly to those who did resistance training but were younger. And while climbing stairs and rising from a chair might not sound like a big deal, these are key factors in maintaining quality of life as we get older. But the results for muscle strength and muscle mass are quite different, and they've got profound implications for how we should be designing our exercise protocols. So for strength, they checked the power of participants' hand grip as well as knee extension. So for both tests, the young resistance trained group performed better than the other three groups, and there weren't significant differences between those other three groups. And given what we've seen so far, we may have expected that the older resistance trained group should have scored similarly to at least the young non-resistance trained group. And yes, they do, but the surprise here is that the older group who didn't do resistance training scored about the same. So the researchers speculate that the activities of daily living were enough in this case to maintain strength. And a similar surprise came with muscle mass. So one of the findings in this area was expected. The young resistance trained, they had a slight but not statistically significant edge over the older resistance trained group. But the surprise here was this, the older resistance trained individuals only had just a little bit more muscle mass compared to those at their age who didn't train. And this was true despite the fact that the older resistance trained group scored much better in areas of physical function. So the researchers here, they draw an interesting conclusion. When we exercise, performance seems to improve for two reasons. Yes, it's a little bit about the muscles getting bigger, but not so much as the second point. The second point is that it's all about how our brain and our nerves 
operate more efficiently to activate our muscles. So they speculate that it's the second thing that might be even more important than the first when it comes to maintaining muscle function, as in the connections from our brain to our muscles are critical and we have to maintain them. So I'll explain how to do that shortly. But first, this finding in the study might also lend some weight to another idea, that it makes good sense to try and build up muscle mass when we're younger, and that's because there's a normal progression where muscle mass it tends to peak in our 30s and then it slowly declines for a while and then it really starts to drop from our 60s. So the higher that peak in our 30s, the more we'll still have left in our 70s. So that's part of the reason why I personally supplement with Microvitamin Plus. So it gives me creatine monohydrate plus TMG to try and boost my workouts and enhance my muscle recovery. But just because I take a supplement does not in any way mean that you should as well. But in any case, the study results are clear on this. Older adults who resistance train, they maintain basic physical abilities well into their 60s at a level similar to those of younger adults in their 20s who don't resistance train. They even show similar abilities on some measures to younger adults who do train regularly. And we're not talking about master athletes here, it's regular people who hit the standard guidelines for resistance training. That means strength training exercises for all of the major muscle groups at least twice a week. And these findings are hugely significant. Muscle loss and impaired physical function affect about 45% of older adults, and it can often lead to declining independence and lower quality of life. And this study shows that we can use resistance exercise to prevent this. But like I hinted at earlier, we need to focus our exercise training in a particular way. So let me explain that. So again, this study focused on resistance training, and that raises an important question. What about the other types of exercises, like cardio? Do they all work equally well, or do the different types of exercises make unique contributions to our health? So any type of exercise has benefits, but it does appear that they do affect the body in different ways. So some of these are obvious, right? If you want to build strength and muscle mass, you'll want to do resistance training. But if you want to build up your cardiorespiratory fitness, you want to go for a jog and boost your markers like VO2 max. But besides considering strength and endurance in our exercise, there's another dynamic that many people overlook, and that's power. So that's distinct from strength, and it has to do with how quickly we can generate force with our muscles. So interestingly, it declines more quickly than strength as we age, and it looks like it might even be more important when it comes to maintaining physical function, as this new study seems to suggest. Moreover, a significant recent analysis looked at about 4,000 individuals over 10 years, and the findings suggest that power is a stronger predictor of mortality than strength. So the studies have found that power training is more effective at maintaining power than standard strength training. So power training involves combining strength and speed. So in a particular study of exercise in older adults, for instance, participants used power training approaches and were instructed to perform exercise movements as quickly as possible, and they also wore weighted vests to increase the resistance, and that approach provided greater power benefits compared to regular strength training. So overall, it appears that the best strategy is to try and include a variety of different exercises, including resistance, endurance, and power. And again, that's the one that most people forget about. The particular benefits of each workout, they work together to maximize our benefit. But how much do we need? Well, the standard recommendations is to aim for at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity exercise a week, or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise. But a combination of the two also works. And for many of us, that can sound like a lot, but that's why this new study data is so exciting, because it reveals that we can reap a surprisingly large percentage of the benefits of exercise in a lot less time. And make sure to check out this next video here to learn just how low we can go with our exercise to still see significant improvements for our health.